Hi, Lloyd Macedo, speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com, and it was Lloyd Macedo. Um, I kind of got a couple of requests for my 2012 DTAC video that uh, you know I had done in uh, in Abu Dhabi. This was in 2012, and uh, it was considered at that time to be one of the most controversial uh, speeches ever given. The reason being is because number one, until that time, nobody, uh, everyone used to wear formal attire when coming, especially to the conference level, the the finals of the Middle East Championships. That was number one. Second one is most of the speeches were considered to be nicey nice. They had to fit within the so-called uh, narrow-minded conservative uh, concepts of speaking. And uh, when I came there, I came up dressed up in uh, knee-length uh, shorts and uh, sleeveless. I exposed all my tattoos. That was another shocking thing. I put rings. I put chains. That was another shocking thing. And I spoke about. Um, uh, how people judge others, and I brought up a uh, rather Islamic uh, story or a, a biblical story that was the stoning of a woman, and which was and is still considered as a taboo topic in Toastmasters. So, bringing all these factors, I think, uh, made that speech kind of really controversial. The end result, which was not shown on the video, was uh, the total mayhem that took place after the speech, after I gave that speech. Many Saudi uh, Toastmaster delegates, they stood up and they came uh, in protest, saying that uh, this is not allowed, this uh, demeanor, this dress, this appearance, this story is not allowed. Because I spoke uh, when I spoke about Jesus Christ, I didn't actually say Jesus Christ, I spoke uh, as a prophet, just to make sure that I don't cross the line. Um, many of them stood up and it was an absolute mayhem. And my mentor, who was Mohammed Murad, who was the district governor, um, he just, uh, you know, destroyed all the uh, accusations that were there and said, this is a speech that is allowed. Also, another thing that was not shown on the video was uh, the world champions, uh, speakers who came, they all congratulated me. However, the winner that year was a Toastmaster who had an amazing voice. People loved his voice and uh, they liked, uh, uh, personally speaking, I thought he spoke bullshit. Uh, I didn't like his speech at all, but you know, <laughs> whatever. They like uh, people who play safe. The second uh, place winner was a guy who was humorous, funny, so they preferred that speech. Uh, no complaints, however. I enjoyed the Toastmaster journey as long as it lasted, and uh, this is what the speech is about. So enjoy. Uh, the recording is not very clear. Uh, hope you like it. And uh, yeah, all the gimmicks and everything that there is from staging, moving around, actions is what Toastmasters uh, judges expect. So I had to make it in the way that was that was helped me score you know points. So watch the speech, DTAC 2012. Give me your views. I'd love to hear from you. Goodbye for now. Hey. You must be wondering, am I taking part for the annual speaking convention? Or am I taking part for the annual wrestling convention? Understand, fellow those masters, and those of you who think I look like a WWE wrestler, well, this is how I dress up and I make my favorite disco thing. But people look at me, I don't know why, they're going to get shocked. Some people are like me say, this guy, he must be a smoker, drinker, blanket, and someone who's being jailed. Some people, they look at me and they whisper to their friends, hey, what is that? What is all this? I think it's all little bit of But there are some fine parts of me. Come on to me and tell me. My dear boy, if you want some, I can come and go with time. Thank you. Yes, I have matches. But I don't smoke. I don't drink. And I haven't been to jail. As yet. I have tattoos, I have piercings, but my friends, my heart does not have any tattoos. My values don't have any piercings. And people, without even knowing me, they pick up the stone of judgment and they throw it at me. I mean, has someone thrown the stone of judgment at you without even knowing you? Judged you because of the color of your skin, the nationality, or the passport that you're holding? Judged you because of your religion? The pastor. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
be a great people that have a right to throw this sort of judgment at others without knowing it. Or is it better to just do it? As I take this song now, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Susan Boyd. Susan Boyd is a 48 year old Scottish woman. Let me describe her. She is uh, unemployed, overweight, brown faced, disheveled hair. She looks as attractive as I do. I mean, on April 11, 2009, she decided to do something beautiful. She decided to sing a song on the live TV talent show. Britain's rock talent. As soon as she stepped on the stage, even before she could punch a word, thousands in the auditorium, they laughed, they mocked, they made fun of her. But ooh, this woman of substance kept her faith. And the second she opened her mouth to sing. There are tears of joy. A standing ovation of hope, a thunderous applause of love. The judges gave her an absolute yes. And yes, she won. One people laugh at today has more than a hundred million people logging on to YouTube just to watch a great performance as a source of inspiration. When I ask you, do you think it was right of people to throw the sort of judgment at her? Or was it better for them just go it away? Well, let me introduce you to another friend of mine. Now she's my favorite. Her name is Akusaka. I'll describe her in a few words. She is a sweet, sensitive, uh, slim, slender, smart, sophisticated, and a simply super 17 year old psychic girl. I mean, she's perfect. But the day I came to know that she sells her body to make a living, I moved away from her. I treated her with disgust, disrespect. She didn't harm me, but I began harming her. And one day she came up right on my face and asked me, Why? And I told her, What sort of person are you? No values, no ethics, no morals? Is this a way a person should live? God gave me gifts to feast it with the cops. Her reply was this. She lifted up the sleeve and threw me around. Because her father took an iron rod and broke both her arms because she refused to get in the street and tortured her to achieve it. Today she has no children with no hope, no education, no guidance. How do you expect her to think that? You think she was right to me, it was so much judgment at her, or was it better for me to test her? Why wait? My girlfriend, she's not a child, but she is Mary McMillan. A ordinary woman, also a name, nothing great about her. But one day she got caught committing an act of sin, and before you know it, an angry mom came up to us, dragged her out of the house, dragged her onto the streets, dragged her onto the feet of a wise man. And they shouted, Master, this woman has committed sin. As for our custom and tradition, we should stone her to death. Tell us what should we do. This wise man, he told them, if anyone among you has not committed a single sin, you'd be the first one to go to stone and her. And as the queen goes, they looked at each other and they walked away. But the stone of judgment, they threw it away. You see, friends, these three people <coughs> and millions of you have an invisible string that connects us all. And that is the fact that today evolution has given us limitations. If we don't understand someone or something, we throw so much judgment at them. There are many others out there who will not understand your religion, your culture, the way you eat your meal. The way live, the way you dress. But if we stop judging others and try to understand them with love, with compassion, with patience, I believe this world will be a better place. So the next time you pick up 
the scroll of judgment, and you want to do it somewhere, ask yourself, should I throw the scroll of judgment at them?